So, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jan Vassbinder, and I'm the director of the complexity program at NTU. And I warmly welcome you to this conference, More is Different. As your chairman, I will give you some background about the program that now has his, most, his, his major conference, but I will also lead you through the booklet that you got when you registered and give you the information that is not in it. By the way, you should put your sticker that is on the back of your name tag on the booklet if you want to make sure that nobody else takes it. Uh, but let me start, oh, and then after I went to the book, I'll introduce uh, our president, Bertel Anderson, to give the opening address. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit but I, as I talk about the program. But first, let me tell you that I'm extremely pleased that you turned up in such large numbers, although a large number of the large number are still in the traffic. Uh, we actually hope that the time for 200 participants, we have about 360 registered participants. And as more is different, that might mean that we will actually ultimately have to use the overflow room um, in lecture room one, where there is a closed television uh, circuit that makes it possible to follow. But it may also mean that, uh, that there's just, uh, that there not all the people will turn up and then we will just fill nicely this audience. Um, but most of all, it means that that large number of people that are interested, that there's a great interest in complexity. And that is what, of course, pleases us tremendously. Now, let me start now by telling you a little bit of, about the complexity program. That program emerged from a number of interrelated events, of which I will mention a few. The first one, was the foundation of Institute Paralimes in Europe in 2006. Bertel Anderson was one of the founding fathers, as were Brian Arthur, who is here, and Sidney Brenner, who will be here tomorrow, and myself, and quite a few others. Institute Paralimes was meant to become the European equivalent of the Santa Fe Institute. As you know, the Santa Fe Institute is the place that in the late 1980s, attracted some of the brightest and most daring scientists to pioneer intense interdisciplinary collaboration as a way to find clues why our world is so complex. It still does this, and some of the early pioneers and some of the later pioneers are in this audience. The second event along the path to the NTU complexity program is the conference in honor of John Holland's 80th birthday. John was well of one of those pioneers, and he still is. John was also one of the founding fathers of Santa Fe and of IPL. And Santa Fe Institute, IPL, and NTU jointly organized that conference for John in 2009. Professor Sugwa Ning, at that time the president of NTU, hosted that conference. He is here to ask him, but I believe that the complexity virus infected him during that conference. John, unfortunately, could not make it to this conference, and neither could Monique van Donsel, who, with very strong support of both Sugwaning and Bertel Anderson, helped spread that virus by organizing a series of workshops, and and workshops on interdisciplinary science and complexity, all in close collaboration with Santa Fe and IPL. These workshops served another purpose as well, namely to develop an international network of institutes institutes devoted to genuine interdisciplinary science. They also provided the moral support for IPL to keep going despite the fact that there were no funds. The third event that I want to mention, although I cannot put a precise date on it, was the decision by Bertel Anderson to actively help find a European home and source of funding for IPL. All that created a fertile soil for the complexity program to grow on and in the fall of 2010 and the beginning of 2011, Brian Arthur plowed that soil, that soil and prepared the actual establishment of the program. And the final event was the decision by the management of NTU to set aside a budget to seed the program. And from then on, it was just a matter of to get it going. I was asked in March 2011 to help, 
and I started in August 2011. Since then, we have established an active complexity community at NTU with strong ties with government agencies and other Singaporean universities, as well as with Santa Fe Institute, IPL, and the Rican Brain Research Science Institute in Tokyo. We are now in the process of developing programs on governance, cities, brains, innovation, and ecosystems change in society. And these programs will start at the bottom, meaning with the young faculty of NTU. It is my strong conviction that a new and in many ways still undefined science like complexity can only make real steps forward if new and risky ideas and concepts are generated by the scientists who then get the possibility to explore these ideas. As scientists often have many ideas, have many ideas to explore, there's also a definite role for government and industry to choose and support the ideas that are most relevant to them. The NTU program will look for a good balance between the bottom-up approach, approach that is crucial for originality, creativity, and risk-taking, and the top-down approach that prefers applications. The program will be successful if that balance is found and if a substantial part of its activities are high risk and permitted to fail. The speakers of this conference have taken such risks in their quest for a better understanding of the world we live in, and by doing that, they opened up entirely new fields of research. And that brings me to some practical things. Each of the speakers will talk for about 45 minutes, after which you get, to, you get the opportunity to discuss with them for another 45 minutes. All the talks and discussions are recorded so that we can later post them on internet. To make sure that all that is being said is indeed recorded, we have two standing microphones and three students walking around with portable microphones. I ask you to use them if you want to to be part of the discussion. After each talk, there will be a break in which you can discuss with the speakers and between yourselves, or in which you can catch up with your iPhones and your Blackberries. Please switch them off or put them in a silent mode during the talks. During the breaks, there will also be poster sessions that have been prepared by a number of young scientists from different parts of the world and from NTU. In the booklet that you got, this one, that you put, have to put your sticker on, uh, you will find their bios and the bios of the speakers and most of the members of the complexity community at NTU and the other universities that are involved with it. That community forms the core of the program and some of its members will chair some of the sessions in the coming days. The booklet really basically gives you all the information on the program. What is not in it is the information on the transportation to the venue of the dinner tonight. For those who need transportation, there will be buses that will get you to the venue and back. If you've not, if not already done so, then please let the people at the registration know that you need transportation. What you also will not find in the book is information about the team that made this conference possible. That team consists of Suan, who organized it all, I'm not sure that she's here. Karen, who administered it all, and Chuyan, I always have difficulty pronouncing that name, who assisted both. They agreed to one picture in the book only, no more. But they did an absolute fantastic job. Now, after having given you all the background you need to fully participate in the conference, it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you Professor Bertel Anderson, the president of NTU. As I've indicated before, Professor Anderson has been a great and active supporter of getting the complexity program at NTU going. However, when I first met him in 2005, such a program in Singapore almost certainly was not on his mind. He was then the CEO of the European Science Foundation, involved in the intricacies of, European, of the European science world. That was dealing with a level of complexity, the like of which we do not know in Singapore. <laughs> he must have missed that one coming to NTU, because immediately after setting foot in Singapore, 
Professor Anderson set out to develop his own complexity program. I'm very pleased that he asked me to help him to do so, and I'm gladly hand over the microphone to our president, Bertel Anderson. Thank you, John. So, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Welcome this rainy morning. I think uh, it's the hy hydro waterproof people that has come here this morning. The others are still waiting for the rain to stop. Anyway, despite the rain, it is a special morning on this 27th of February at Nanyang Technological University, MTU, here in Singapore. Of course, every day should be special at such a dynamic university such as NTU. For example, new researchers and discoveries being made, students progressing well in their studies, and new top, top professors being recruited. But today is extra special, extra, extra special. NTU is now starting a new research program, a research program on complexity one of the first in Asia, actually. The significance of today's events is obvious if we consider the scientists and people who has come here to Singapore to part participate in our workshop. Several pioneers or leaders when it comes to complexity studies. Welcome again to all of you. The title of this workshop has been said to, more is different. Taste it. More is different. It's an intriguing title, I, I think, and I think indeed it reflects unique character of complex systems. The title, more is different, come from a famous article back in 1972 by an author with the perfect name of Anderson. Philip Anderson, <laughs> and, and as you probably know, he won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1977. From reading his article, it is clear that we need more than elementary particles, more than the laws of nature to understand the world, the complexity of the world. Let me give you some examples on complexity and complexity issues. As a biochemist, it's easy for me to start to mention that living organisms are complex systems. Today, for example, systems biology is an established concept. Life science have, of course, traditionally been very discipline-oriented and re re reductionist. One researcher, one enzyme was a common concept. Remaining within biology area, the brain is certainly a challenging complex system. Biofilms or microorganisms that we are studying here at NTU via CELSI, one of our research center of excellence, is a complex system. Understanding climate and climate change needs complexity analysis. In NTU, through our other RCE, the Earth Observatory of Singapore, EOS. Our macroeconomic systems are also certainly complex. Just listen to the news every day. And the big mega cities of the world provide another example and challenge. Well, as the president of NTU, I, in my depressive moments, also think that the university is quite a complex system, but uh, it may be not be quite qualifying to be a study object for this. I mentioned before that several of the pioneers of complexity studies are here today. Brian Arthur, Jeffrey West, which both are associated with the Santa Fe Institute in the United States, and Jan Fassbinder has already mentioned that. The Santa Fe Institute was founded in 1984, about 28 years ago, by pioneering scientists who realize that important new areas of knowledge can be harvested if disciplinary boundaries are crossed. 
Many came from US universities where they felt trapped in the disciplinary structure and boundaries that functioned as efficient hindrance for more interdisciplinary collaborations on complex issues. So the Santa Fe pioneers created their own institute and now 28 years later, it's clear that the Santa Fe Institute started something new that has now starting to spread across the world. Although, as I already indicated, the implementation of interdisciplinarity is not always easy and straightforward in a disciplinary university context, and that, I'm afraid, is also true for my dear NTU. The Santa Fe Institute was started by George Cohen, Another early starter was Murray Gelman, who has visited NUS and IAS several times, uh, and also quite recently. Although the Santa Fe philosophy spread, there are very few institutes like the Santa Fe Institute, I would say. However, as John mentioned, in 2004, there was an initiative to start a European Santa Fe type of institute. In other words, about 20 years lag with respect to the US and the real Santa Fe. Uh, one of the pioneers to this European Santa Fe Institute, named Paralimis, as we heard, without borders, if you translate it, is here with us today, Jan Fassbinder, who already presented himself. He's still working with Paralimit, but fortunately, he's also a finger in the complexity pie here in Singapore. In 2006, as we heard, Paralima started to operate. The headquarters was in Duisburg in the Netherlands, and it had an initial budget of about one million euro. You have to note that this was the time when the euro was quite uh, good in, in the currency and quite, had quite a lot of value. There has been some water under the bridges since then. I had the opportunity as CEO of the European Science Foundation at that time to contribute to the in initial funding but more importantly, also to participate in the assemblies and in the workshops, which included some 10 to 20 Nobel Prize winners, other top researchers, and notably, already at that time, some Santa Fe people. I think that's when I got infected. The year of 2007, we can say, was the peak for Paralimes with many activities and many uh, really uh, groundbreaking activities. Then came 2008 and the global economical crisis, and in 2009, Paralimus lacked funding. Through hard work and dedicated work of John Fassbinder, he kept the Paralimus dream alive, and it's now likely that Paralimus will have a second birth, now in France, supported by the city of Strasbourg and the region of, of Alsace. Vive la France! Eh? The funding for interdisciplinary research and complexity studies is indeed not easy, as we have witnessed from the Paralimus birth story. Because not only the university suffers from disciplinary sclerosis, but so does also the funding agencies. I guess also Santa Fe suffered from this lack of funding from the American public system in its early days, and if I understand correctly, survived largely by private donations, which are slightly more scarce in Europe, I would say. So, what about complexity studies and centers for complexity studies in Asia? Not so very developed is probably a fair answer. Coming here to Singapore from Strasbourg in 2007 with the Paralimis experience in mind, I discussed the issue of complexity with Professor Su Ganing, my predecessor as president at NTU. And he was very positive. He most of the time was very positive, but he was particularly positive <laughs> due to the complexity issue, and he encouraged us to move on and in order to create an Asian Singaporean Complexity Institute, being a, an Asian node and a partner to the American Santa Fe and the European Paralimus. Simultaneously in Japan, 
There was also movements in response to the need for complexity studies, which has resulted in the Riken Center for Human Cognition. I think we have representation from them here today. At NTU, we have worked um, steadily since the late 2008 to establish a complexity research program that eventually should transform into a complexity institute. The work has accelerated the last year or so uh, when we have been able to borrow John Fassbinder from Europe and Paralimus. I should take the opportunity, of course, to thank John for his dedicated job and his team, and not the least of organizing this workshop. It has also been essential that NTU has been able to tap on the experience of Santa Fe veterans, such as Jeffrey West and Brian Arthur, which now spends uh, time here at NTU as distinguished visiting, not extinguished, distinguished visiting, visiting professors. Their knowledge and experience has been of great value to us. Of course, our complexity program would be meaningless if we did not have dedicated faculty at NTU that are engaged in research with relevance to complexity issues. Interestingly, these faculty come from a var variety of schools and centers. It's actually a nice spread over the university. Also, our two RCE directors, Stefan Schelleberg from CELSI and Kerry C. from EOS are engaged. Our complexity institute will also be closely linked and be synergistic part of our Institute of Advanced Studies today led by KK, Professor Keiki Pua. We have also had positive interest from several other Singaporean stakeholders, such as ASTAR, that has a keen interest in certain areas related to complexity, and also NUS and the new university, SUTD. There is also an interest from what I would call the official Singapore, which I think today can be best represented by Peter Ho. Of course, Peter Ho thinks he is a very retired guy, but uh, I think he is very useful. And I'm pleased that Peter Ho has engaged in our work and contributed at several meetings and round table discussions. He has in particular stressed the applied aspects of complexity studies. Going from uh, talking to doing. And Singapore, as you know, is good at that. The applied side would be particularly relevant when it comes to urban studies, for example, understanding the body and soul of modern megacities. Undoubtedly, Singapore could be an interesting model system and where the knowledge level and organizational structure would be such that it could open new avenues of the topic. Finally, let me once again welcome you to the workshop, and I hope you will enjoy its talks and uh, discussions and be inspired from them. For us at NTU, it will hopefully also give us useful advice how to proceed with our Complexity Institute. I believe that this is a big opportunity for NTU and Singapore to engage in complexity research. And indeed, there has never been a bigger need for it in Singapore, in Asia, or the world as a whole. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, have a good conference, and have fun.